Oh, hello. I'm the Duchess of Cakebridge from How to Cake It, Yolanda Gamp. Cakebridge is just north of Toronto. <laughs> Welcome, my royal yo-yos. Remind me to speak softly during this interview. This week I'll be making a handbag for a friend of mine, Kate Middleton. She's the Duchess of Cambridge. Every time Kate joins us for bridge, she has the loveliest bags. Now, as you may know, Kate's birthday is around the corner. So I designed this bag just for her. I feel like this is something that Big Willie would buy Kate. Who's Big Willie? Prince William. That's his nickname. That's what the ladies call him. To make this handbag cake, I baked three vanilla toffee cakes. Two of them nine by 13 inches and one of them 10 by 10 inches. I needed 12 pounds of my vanilla cake batter, which I gave a twist by switching out half of my white sugar for brown sugar and adding toffee bits. If you can't come all the way to Cake Bridge to have this cake, I will put all of the details below in a link. I begin by removing all my cakes from their pans, leveling off the top and removing the bottom caramelized layer. Then I also trimmed the caramelized sides off all three cakes. But don't worry, we don't waste in Cake Bridge. Of course, I must try this toffee vanilla cake before I give it to my friend. So I'm just gonna have a bit and make myself a cup of tea. Pinky up, yo. Oh. That's harder than it looks, there we go. Where were we? I now need to cut these cakes into strips, which I will then stack one on top of the other to create a bag that from the side looks like this, like the letter A. I'll put all the exact measurements of my cake strips in the blog link below. I stack three strips of my cake with Italian meringue buttercream, place some dowels and a board in between for support, and then stack the last three strips. Mm. Why the board, you ask? This cake is gonna end up being around 11 inches tall, so that's very high. So anytime I get past six inches, I start adding dowels and boards. Both the dowels and the board are food safe. They are made for cakes. You simply remove them and continue cutting the cake. Just eat the cake, not the dowels. I wanna chill this cake for a half an hour to get the buttercream nice and firm so it will be easier to carve into a handbag. Kate, of course, is already subscribed to How to Cake It. So is Big Willie, so is the whole royal family. Liz, Liz loves it. She does, you know, she does. <laughs> she really loves How to Cake It. <laughs> Liz. I think she's commenting right now. I called her Liz. I did that. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to reach a million subscribers by my one year anniversary on February 9th. This duchess would be thrilled. Now that my cake is chilled, I'm going to use a ruler and a sharp serrated knife and carve off the front and back. I'm going to line up my ruler on the side of my cake and run my knife along it to create that shape I talked about earlier where it's wider at the bottom and thinner at the top. On a real handbag, the leather sort of collapses and folds in at the sides. So I'm gonna remove some cake from the sides to create that indent. I can't stand when my handbag doesn't stand up properly. Just oh, get so upset. My cake is carved. I'm gonna crumb coat it with Italian meringue buttercream and pop it in the fridge to chill. I know Kate will love my Italian meringue buttercream. Uh, when we were studying at the British Institute in Florence, she just loved everything Italian. So she even learned the language a little. I just learned how to make buttercream. I'm gonna ice it one more time with Italian meringue buttercream and pop it back in the fridge. To cover this handbag cake, I begin by rolling out some tan colored fondant. <laughs> Kate always calls it fondant. And cover the sides, working it into the indent I created and then trimming away the excess carefully along the edges of the bag. Now I roll out some black fondant and I'm gonna cover one side of the bag at a time. I start with the back of the bag, I drape a piece over the back, smooth it down, and then I just trim it right at the top of the bag in the center. Then I roll out another piece of black fondant to cover the front of the bag, 
cutting it at the seam at the top, making a nice clean seam. And then I use a chopstick to help me cut all of the sides of the bag. I want that black leather, oh, look at me, that black fondant to sort of jut out a little over the tan fondant. I want to add some stitch detail both to the tan and black parts of my bag. I use an overstitch wheel and I just carefully run all up the sides and the bottom of each part of my bag. Now I'm gonna roll out my blue fondant to create a flap that goes over the bag. That's how Kate will open her bag. I carefully mark where the flap will land on the front of the bag. Make sure to wet your cake a little with a bit of water where the fondant will lie. And then I pick up my piece of blue fondant very gently, line it up with my mark, make sure it's even on the bag and gently drape it over the cake. I trim the blue fondant where it lands at the back of the bag nice and straight and I add the same stitch detail to my blue fondant as I did to the rest of my purse. I wanted to give this cake some life. Fondant is quite matte and leather has a bit of a sheen and more depth. So you guessed it, I'm gonna paint this cake. I mix some ivory food coloring with a little bit of clear food grade alcohol. I prefer white rum. And then I just use a brush and brush this over my tan fondant as well as my black fondant. You know, Kate and I looked at so many lovely paintings while in Florence together. I think it really helped my technique. Now for the blue flap of this bag, I really wanted to enhance the blue. So I'm using royal blue food coloring with a little bit more alcohol. I just brush on my royal blue paint with a paintbrush and try to paint in one direction. I know Kate's gonna love this blue because, oh, I, perhaps you don't know. Kate even had a blue ribbon sewn into her wedding dress as her something blue. <laughs> we have such good times. This bag needs some hardware, particularly some gold hardware. I'm gonna make my hardware out of yellow tinted gum paste. I'm making a few loops and buckles and a nice latch for the front of the bag. Every time Kate comes to Cake Bridge, I really have a good look at her bags. They're lovely. Last time she was here, I snuck a few pics when she wasn't looking. Just make sure that your hardware is the right size for your bag. Once all of your hardware is completely dry, to give it a gold sheen, just brush on some vegetable shortening and then a bit of gold highlighter. So fancy. This needs to go on an expensive bag. Highlighter is basically luster dust. It just has more of a metallic sheen. It comes in gold and silver. You can click the link below and see the exact one that I used. I'm gonna make the handle as well as the shoulder strap for this bag. It's so convenient when a bag has both. I want both the handle and the long strap to be black on the outside and tan on the interior with stitch detail to complete it. You wanna be really careful when you're looping your fondant through your gold gum paste hardware. The highlighter rubs off really easily, so make sure you're not getting too much on your fondant. The tricky thing about making straps out of fondant is you need to be precise, yet you need to work quickly because the longer you leave this long piece of fondant out, the more it dries up and when you go to place it on your bag or fold it at the ends, you'll get a lot of cracking and tearing. So you need a strategy, you need order, like the monarchy. I'm gonna add part of my front clasp to this bag, make sure it's centered and just brush a little clear piping gel on the back before sticking it to the blue fondant. I was about to say leather. This bag needs a zipper. Back compartments on a bag are essential. I'm making it out of yellow gum paste as well, but the difference is you don't want your gum paste to dry. You wanna make it and have it still be soft when you apply it to the bag. To make the little indents you see on a zipper, I use a strip cutter. It's fun, but tedious. I studied the zipper on my jeans as I went. That's not very ladylike. No, it, it wasn't. I turned around. Then I painted the zipper with the same vegetable shortening and gold highlighter and placed it on the back of my bag. And then I added a little bit of stitch detail around that zipper. Now I'm gonna add my long shoulder strap to this bag with all of its hardware. I did use some gold floral wire to help secure the hardware. Whenever I have to use floral wire in a cake for support, 
I always make sure to tell the client, you want to make them aware of what they should remove before cutting the cake. The straps of this bag are not looking as lifelike as the rest of the bag. So I need to paint them with a little ivory food coloring once again, just carefully, carefully paint, making sure not to drip on your handbag. The final touch to this bag is adding the ring at the front of the clasp. I once again use some gold floral wire to help secure it. And I just place it on an angle like it's, you know, been half opened. Happy birthday to Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge. I just want you to know that Canada loves you, especially the Duchess of Cakebridge. But don't worry, I'll see you at the party. I'll see you at the palace. In the meantime, I'll have a slice for you. With some tea, of course. <laughs> Almost forgot. Goodbye from Cakebridge. <laughs> Who are you waving to, yo? The yo-yo's way there in the back. Hashtag. Hashtag how to cake it. You have to do a gentle hashtag. Okay, Kate, let me know what you think. Leave a comment. You've, you've got my email. Just drop me a line. Tell me at the next bridge meeting. <laughs>